This is the NEFIO observability meetings for well, Pacific time, um, March 4th, 2024. Okay, there you go. <laughs> uh, okay, Piatra, you just you just joined. I just wonder if you if you if you want to. One of the things is. You were, we, we didn't get the chance to really go into your diagram last week. So do you want to slot that in for this week? Again, could you repeat you? You mean the presentation? Proposed architectural diagram that, uh, that you said we, you, you wanted, you wanted to have a little more time to talk about, right? The one that uh, I mean, uh, I didn't approve it. So I, I'm not sure. I mean, the feedback is is welcome. So if you if you would like, I can show you if you have any feedback to this to the to decide what is and what isn't in the scope, what is okay. good and what is bad, we can discuss that. What do you think? Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, before then, anyone has anything that they want to discuss? Okay. Yeah. Let's let's do that. And another thing for me, another thing that I, I do want to get off is um, um, for folks who are interested to contribute, I, I would I would like to get to some sort of milestone for something, a very simple integrations of several pieces to go. So I, I guess I can we can talk about that after uh, Piatra. So do you want to go ahead, Piatra? I sure. Yeah, you can you can present. Go ahead. I am not sure if there is anyone who was absent last week. Do we need to? I, I mean, do you want me to explain everything is what is here on the slide, or we just want to make a brainstorming? What is good? What is bad? Do you have any questions? Maybe you can quickly summarize, uh, if possible, Peter, because a uh, couple of people didn't attend, including me, last week. Okay. So I have two slides. Uh, just like I said, it's uh, related to more probably more broad topic, which we are doing uh, right now in Orange. And uh, we would like to propose a kind of architecture, but I'm aware that Nephew may not want to utilize the whole framework but uh we assume that we have a heterogeneous cloud infrastructure just like in nephew and we are running kubernetes clusters workload kubernetes clusters we would like to use kubernetes operators to supervise the network function just like in the nephew so uh we have the uh, the style is we have the orchestration on top and we orchestrate the operators we orchestrate the infrastructure and also we can orchestrate so-called the edge observability stack for now this is just the placeholder which will be described on the next slide i can see that we need to be scalable we need to make sure that we select only crucial data, but if you would like to talk about the observability rather on the money rather than the monitoring, we need to collect every possible piece. So from the infrastructure, from the Kubernetes itself, from the operator and network functions. Uh, and we talk about metrics, tra traces and logs, of course, all signals which are described in the open telemetry because we think open telemetry is a good way to progress and it may be really helpful to produce something relevant. You can see from the edge observability stack uh, here, two arrows, one is local insights. And the second, was, second one is to push data to the central remote observability stack. So locally, 
we need to somehow decide. We need some mechanisms to decide which metrics will be stored locally, which will be pushed to the central cluster. We cannot assume that everything will be locally or everything will be pushed to the central because it will be not scalable in the large scale. But here comes, let's say, the second slide and the hotel, which is uh, all that, for example, I, I can say auto collector. And uh, in details, the auto collector, I'm not sure if you are aware, uh, is composed of such elements. So we have receivers, processors, and exporters. We also can have connectors and uh, extensions, but uh, this is something which is interesting because it's vendor agnostic and tool agnostic. We can have a set of collectors and uh, on this slide we propose one of possibilities but it's not the only one which can be utilized so we assume that on the workload cluster we can have a custom collectors as a sidecars to observe the network functions which may or may not be um, instrumented using open telemetry sdk and apis it's the same for the operator which manages the network, network functions to have a deep view what's going on in the cluster. Then we have we may have the hotel collector as a demo set to observe each node of the Kubernetes cluster in a context of all Kubernetes resources or even uh, eBPF programs. The eBPF programs is crucial here because first of all, it's high performance, non-intrusive. But the second point is that uh, from my research, I can say that uh, open telemetry does not uh, support the automatic instrumentation for the net for the programs written in the Golang natively. But we saw that there is some solution to make the automatic instrumentation using eBPF programs. So it's relevant on a few fields. Uh, automatic instrumentation for the proof of concept will be really important because as I know, uh, Pre5GC is not instrumented with the Open Telemetry SDK. But going, going back, so we, we collect data per node and push the data to the pipeline per which is collector per, 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 per cluster. We push the data from the auto collector sidecars to the same pipeline and it's realized by some kind of receivers. We can have we can use many receivers which are existing, but we can build new if it's required. Then from the receivers, the data is going through the processors. And here we can enrich data, delete, which is not relevant. I uh, highlighted here the data classification because it also can be realized here. And what I mean is that classification, what data will be left of the local cluster and which will be pushed to the central. So the data is pushed by the exporters, the same as the processors and receivers. We have a lot of those, we have a lot of those, but we can build our own. So from there, data is pushed to vendor specific metrics, uh, backends, for example, Prometheus, uh, Prometheus for, uh, for metrics, or Jaeger for traces, the same for the central cloud. The second thing is the this local insights operator. I'm not sure if it's relevant. Probably it may be a thing, or we can assume that probably the open uh, custom operator will fetch the data from backends. But the question is, and I don't have an answer yet, how to expose this data? Uh, because when, when it comes to the data such as CPU, memory utilization, which is really generic and will be probably stored in the central cluster where we have 
some kind of API in the observability controller. Uh, it's easy. We can assume that there is a set of APIs, but then we come to the situation when we would like to uh, instrument our framework to observe some kind of metrics, KPIs, et cetera, for specific network function, maybe vendor specific network function. So I can see that we probably may have some kind of CRD where we define those. And based on that, the instrumentation is done. And also based on that, we somehow need to expose. So operator, operator, operator will need to know that something exists because without that, we have some data, but it's just kind of mess, the chaos. Um, maybe one more thing about the management cluster. In the management, I assume that we push the data from the all workload cluster here. It can be do to to directly to the Mac backends, or it can be the push to the collector. It at this point uh, it doesn't matter for me. Also, just like we have on the on the workload, we can have the demo set on the management. It's not indicated, but of course, the number of other collectors is in our. We can decide how to make this hierarchy. But the important thing, which is relevant for Nephew, because there are calls from the Nephew community, is to observe the Nephew components itself. It can be realized in the same way as the workload cluster, and the data will be pushed the, through the same pipeline, and at the end, it will be stored in the same backend. From there, we can use the data centrally for the management and orchestration. I'm not sure if it's only relevant for Nephew or some high level service orchestrator, but here we have service assurance, preventive maintenance, data-driven orchestration, and et cetera, such, concept, such concepts, uh, which can be also enriched with the AI or ML. So yeah, that's a summary which I had in mind. But the question is, what is in the scope? What is done wrong? What is done good here? And what are other challenges I didn't yet mention or, or I don't see at this point? Thank you. And a question and a feedback right now. Sebastian? Uh, yeah, Peter, uh, maybe I missed some part of it. Uh, so as I as I can see that uh, you are uh, putting the hotel collector as a sidecar, right? So would it be going to be a part of a uh, uh, deployment process that we will put the configuration inside the package or will generate as a pipeline around the we hotel? Have... And... Mm -hmm. We have, sorry to interrupt. We have many possibilities. I didn't uh, yet make a lot of hands-on experience. I'm also kind of pretty new in the auto. But first of all, you have a uh, hotel operator, which is helpful for injecting the sidecars. Second of all, there is uh, the emerging standard called OOP AMP, which is specified in the auto specification. And it allows you to orchestrate the collectors from the central point. For example, it may be, it may be placed right there and based on, and this server will take care of the orchestration of all, all auto collectors. I assume you may have some admission controller if you would like to and make the injection by yourself or you could put the collector in the configuration the question uh, is if it's worth it yeah uh, yeah Peter. actually uh, what uh, i was uh, analyzing uh, 
that currently we have the packages uh, uh, for the UPF, SMF or anything. We have the packages, right? And, and we hydrate it. Uh, we inject the configuration. And finally, over the Git talks, it will get uh, it will come to the workload cluster, right? So, which exact place do you think is the right uh, right for the uh, hotel collect uh, collector sidecar injection? Like where exactly you are going to put uh, this new configuration, or would it be going to be a part of uh, free five GC operator so that so that whenever any NF deployment comes uh, comes for the deployment, so that time you understand uh, the requirement and based on that you enable the sidecar. It might possible that. In some scenario, you you will not uh, put the site. You will use some another mechanism. So yeah, those I think uh, details. If you can, uh, uh, just just give us like uh, what do you think around it? Uh, I hope you understood my question, right? I will. I think yeah. so. I will try to answer. Uh, I believe mm -hmm. the sidecar is optional, just like you said, uh, mm -hmm. because it's it's very relevant when you have your network function instrumented with the hotel SDK or API. Uh, if not, I'm not sure what exactly will be the role. But in the simple scenario, when you just observe manually or is or uh, automatically instrumented network function, you probably don't need to care about looking from the nephew point of view on the orchestra on the observability part you just instantiate the operator uh, which orchestrate the or injects the sidecars which are already configured but when it comes to this just like i mentioned for example some crd which will mention what to observe then we need to mechanism that before the injection we need to uh, take the configuration from the CRD and somehow put it, I am not sure if through the yeah. uh, through the open telemetry operator or through mm -hmm. the, this OP AMP server. I don't have that much on hand experience to decide which uh, which solution would be the best here and. That's why we are trying to achieve at this point pretty simple use case. Okay. And see. Uh, yeah, yeah. I would suggest it would be good if uh, we could have one more slide which which uh, details out. Let's say if we deploy UPF, so so how it, it uh, U, uh, UPF package going to be touched by hotel operator or 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 a sidecar is how going to be ejected so if the, uh, that details if we can, could see uh i think uh, that will give a good understanding i feel uh i might be wrong also yeah uh, but yeah that, that's that's what uh, i was suggesting. Yeah. thank you yeah i i have to say this is high level there is mm -hmm. we could probably put a lot of more components here definitely even the selection of all the receivers and all the exporters it depends on the further uh, decisions right even the processors we need to process the data and then we need to decide if the data will be processed in the auto if if it will in which collector and if it will not be processed here and which backup it will be uh, because Sometimes it's maybe more efficient to process the data or some part of the processing do in the backend itself. So there is a lot of questions at this point. Yeah, what, what another so so what another spike car is necessary? Um, it's it's not needed if you if, so, so originally there was a significant spike car because there was uh, if I, Prefer GC has no uh, nothing to actually uh, expose, uh, so we we of creating a sidecar basically just to be on the same network space and it allows you to then, then expose the data uh, um, when free fire GC otherwise actually expose nothing. Um, but then but then right now in this diagram particularly if you use BPF, um, then then you don't you don't necessarily need a sidecar on the pipe. 
you 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 may you may need something that collects the BPF uh, related uh, traces or or, um, or 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 whatever is written on a table, um, and then and then an instrument that gives an old tower interface. That's that's actually much more what's needed. So you could you may have a you may have a um a per host uh, process, or or you may have a um, a, a privileged uh, daemon set. So they can they can read it from the EBPF. So 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 if we use EBPF instead of using so so recall a long time ago, not a long time ago. Uh, uh, during during the summit, there was one of one of the suggestions I had during the presentation was, oh, uh, in in case free cloud GC has nothing, the the sidecar could be used to uh, because the sidecar is a big network namespace. It allows us to do something like, oh, I I see all the secondary interfaces and then. And then I'll be able to read the stats off of the the, the secondary interfaces. So that was that was the need for sidecar. And then and then and then that's, that's need number one. That's just in case the free GC, something like free GC doesn't have anything that 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 it's been being exposed. And then but then the other side is the sidecar is is instrumenting it using a tail interface. So those are the two uh, functionalities of the sidecar when we when when we are when we were suggesting a sidecar. Mm -hmm. uh, the the second question is from from Sebastian, like who's going to inject the sidecar? That's the that's a completely different thing. You can you can use well, you can use some other things to do it, but there there are ways to actually inject sidecars without mucking around with your with, with the package or deployment uh, deployment uh, resources. Um, but then that's you know if you BPF, maybe you can just kind of skip the sidecar for now. It's easy, let's say, to skip the sidecar itself in this specific use case, but then the question comes to my mind, how do you know when to skip? I mean, in the generic scenario, how do you know if the application is instrumented or is not instrumented with the auto SDKs? Because uh, I, I believe you need to somehow have this mechanism to decide when to put and when not to put the sidecar to alongside the network functions. Or we just target one specific use case, but for FGC, we know all the constraints, etc. So we decided not to so, do that. So when, when, when I proposed when, when I proposed the sidecar a long time ago, that was, obviously it was working to FGC A and then B, um, I didn't think we would do BPF, uh, partly because uh, we we don't we don't expect to, if you if you sell card, the sell card isn't doing BPF because obviously not not all the applications have privilege mode to run BPF programs or even read from BPF tables uh, maps. Uh, but then now, if you are using BPF, and then and then let's say we at least for Netio creates a very specific. Uh, 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 or, or use the BPF program as one reference implementations, uh, and then and then creating an SQL specific uh, uh, pod, a uh, service that would that would expose the uh, say service monitoring information and and, and instrument hotel uh, uh, interfaces. Um, then we have to see if the sidecar is a it's an application specific. Thing. So so I, I think one of the things that we talked about. Sidecar would be used with the getting a rest, invoking a REST API call uh, to say AMF uh, or actually uh, web UI is, is direct direct to API AMF, but then maybe something else. Um, and then and then that would be subscribed to applications. I think I, I never I never actually went that far. I don't know if I, did, but I don't know if the REST API is that great. But then but then let's say the REST API is uh, terminated by a um, AMF, uh, then, then the, then you may have a sidecar AMF that would really kind of get subscriber intelligence and things like this. Um, I, I would much rather sidecar is being used for that purpose, I guess, if we are going to go with BPF, because BPF gives you, for, for example, a, a, why do we need a sidecar for UPF? Because the, the thing we, the thing we actually concern about with UPF would be uh, more throughput information and CPU information, um, and then you don't you don't really need a sidecar to to expose that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, in fact, even if you have the, your uh, application instrumented, you don't need the sidecar. It's just a way to, to make it more, I am not sure how to say that, um, hierarchical. I mean, even in the sidecar, you could already put some, put some processors. And you, it's probably only the way to somehow at this first point or enrich the data or remove some additional data to do not over the, or, or overwhelm this auto process auto collector here but it it really depends on the your needs you can have only one demon set or one pro or, or, or one auto collector per cluster but based on what you decide you will have less or more data less or more visibility on the entire system but for me at this point this is the secondary discussion because how you per how you decide about this hierarchy it's let's say easy and based on, even on the experience we can do that there are other aspects which are really really relevant. First of all, what is in the scope? What you would like to achieve? Mm -hmm. And and then, if you guys believe this mechanism is here to put some data locally and push send some data to the central cluster, which may not be a trivial task, is it relevant for Nephew or not? Uh, then how to define what to observe for, for the specific how the CRD I mentioned can look like and how it can be interpreted to first of all collect the data and second of all to expose the data those are the questions uh, which are relevant for me at this point at least to, to progress somehow Okay, Verada has his hand up for a while, so go ahead, sorry. Right, right. thank you. Um, thanks, Peter. Um, this looks like one of a comprehensive component diagram for observability framework. Um, sorry, I missed the initial uh, introduction part. Uh, are you telling, you know, this is something which is there in the orange as a POC or, you know, something? I, I I didn't get it. Is it something which is already there, or it's a proposed architecture diagram? Uh, I'm a in in the orange. I'm a researcher, and this is the project I'm doing right now. Let's say the observability is something we are starting looking at, and this is just the proposition, the initial proposition. Uh. It's not yet on the place. I'm not saying that. We are trying to, to decide what should be in such solution included, what shouldn't be included, and only then we will go to the in, uh, implementation part and implementation of, of all, let's say, mechanisms, for example, deciding how to make this data classification or how to create or receive insights locally, et cetera, et cetera. So it's early stage of this research. Sure, sure. Thanks, Peter. Yeah, I understand. And there is one comment from Marcin regarding, you know, sidecar in Kubernetes uh, requires a restart and probably instrumenting the existing NFs would be an issue. The, the, uh, so so in general, using like, oh, I'm, I'm responding right now and typing, but in, in, in general rotating, you can, you know, so sidecar injections, Istio is obviously the, the most famous on China, trying to solve this problem. Um, one of them is obviously not, Something we can do, which is which is injected, uh, uh, you when you before you do kube control, 
uh, if you do a contextual manually, which is which is not something we can do. Um, and then and the other one is using rotating webhooks um, to um, to 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 allow you to to make modifications uh, to resources before it hits the API servers. Um, I think that's a hack. <laughs> uh, and uh, and then and then more importantly, um, managing sidecar in general is 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 pretty hairy. Um, in, in, in real production environment, I would say. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I agree with Martin. It's, like, it's not something I would encourage. <laughs> as I mean, I, I know I'm the one who suggested it in the first place last year. Uh, but then, but then, uh, uh, it would be, be nice to get around it to not having it. Um, and um, yeah, and then, and then if we are, and, and then if it is part of it. Um, it would basically, as I said, it would be an application specific one. So it already come with the applications. It would, it would basically be managed by the, uh, by the application itself. Um, that would probably be the best thing to do. Yeah, so uh, it's probably not the best idea to have a sidecar, but to precise, if we assume that Let's see on some workflow. We create a cluster, then we deploy the observability to be on the place. So for example, the hotel operator, and then we are starting to deploy the network, the operator, let's say. And uh, we with the operator, we could put the CRD, which mentions what to monitor, how to monitor based on or, or I don't, or I don't know at, at this point where this shared will be put, but we are starting the network functions after the operator, which is um, responsible for the injection of the sidecar, will be started. So maybe it's not an issue. I'm not sure because it's on the place, so it should inject at at the beginning of the network functions instantiation. The question is if it will need to be adjusted or not. Well, I mean, I, I think the bigger question is what are we what 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 do we want to use it for in this case? So if if the if BPF is so I so the original suggestion was done because there was nothing of regard to the other set earlier. And then and then there were uh, um so sidecar is something that runs in the same name space network namespace and then it allows us to um, get very, very basic, basic uh, um, information. Um, and then, but then if we are having other mechanisms, we have, we have, uh, um, yeah, BPF, if you, if you, we are going to commit to BPF and then there will be a control plane software on top of the BPF programs. Uh, is either running a host on on host or, or on some sort of privileged daemon set, um, then they this becomes the thing that that would be exposing and instrumenting uh, hotel uh, to 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 expose the uh, the visibility data, um, and so so the the sidecar functionality would be more questionable at this point, uh, outside of any more application specific things that we may want to do. Um, I, I, I know I once built a I once built a sidecar next to a network function pod, um, only only because you know there's no other ways to nicely do configurations. The, the, that pod happens to, to we have to SSH to the pod <laughs> to apply configurations and fetch something. Um, so so I mean it's much easier to do on a sidecar, um, and and so but then that's probably not. The things but that would be very specific to that particular vendor's application, um, and and it's not so in a generic sidecar. Um, is I I just I don't see a very large use case now. Uh, if we if we decided to go with BPF. because the the idea would be the service would be exposing uh, metrics and things. Um, on the application front. Um, that was what we are kind of counting on. Yeah. Probably the, the best way is to just 
test console, etc. And if we see that something is yeah, missing, yeah, maybe yeah. that's, that's it maybe sidecar so could next, resolve. Next would be, can... The next level would be, yeah, let's, let's, 35 GC is the reason why I suggested it in the first place. Um, let's see if we can do it with 35 GC, um, which has almost nothing. So it's a, it's a good reference to see um, in case you have nothing, which I don't, none of the commercial NNF would have nothing. They, they all have something. But then for, for, for things that have nothing, uh, um, it gives us a blank sheet of paper <laughs> in the outside to just kind of say, hey, this is the minimum set of things that you, minimum set of information that you can get uh, by using the out of the box NFIO uh, um, observability platform pieces that we can install. Um, I think I think that would be, that's something we probably would like to validate and do uh, on PLC. Hopefully we're going to look for So I mean, the, 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 the questions I have on your diagrams, like I had last week, is um, the 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 need for a local uh, um, collector, not not the hotel collectors, but the the local food bloom uh, um, collecting and backends uh, in in the workout clusters, and then the um, the, the that local analysis uh, engine. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So as you, as you said earlier, that red box. For some reason, I I'm, I'm not able to see your your presentation on as a as a host, but then I have to log in <laughs> through another channel <laughs> to see it, <laughs> which is which is probably uh, something wrong with with this particular login so far. So yeah. Um, Okay, so the local, the local let, me ask, there you go. Um, let me ask this question because uh, I cannot hear you very well. Okay. You say that you are skeptic about this part, right? About the my best backends and uh, local insights. So the backends, I wonder whether or not we need it on the world cluster. Um, the local, the, the local insights. Um, I think you said earlier. That you are, you, you yourself are skeptical when this is needed. Needed. No, this is something that's supposed to. You need a proxy to send it over to, to the operators. So the NNF operators, the vendor operators. I would say differently. Maybe I'm not skeptical. Um, the question is how to realize that we have such component if it's needed. And the question then is how to realize this component or. Operator, it, operator itself should be able to take the metric and mm -hmm. create the insights for itself. Maybe oh, more straightforward. It, it would, it would, I would imagine it would need to, right? Uh, because um, your local insight operator is generic, I'm guessing, on this diagram. Um, and then and, and the NF operators are vendor specific. So if I'm if I'm getting metrics that are specific to vendor X, uh, then the NF operators right now, so far anyway, is the only thing that it, that could possibly be able to understand um, metrics coming directly from vendor X. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. observability, observability right now, so far. I mean, with architecture, architecturally. We're not asking vendors to write an other operator for observability. No, no, no. That's why uh, yeah. maybe it's too too fast to talk about that. But here, here we come to the the CRD, which will define some specific metrics, and uh, mm -hmm. this is a place where it could be interpreted, and it could prepare the data to be used by the operator. I mean. So you're talking about metrics that came from the uh, generally signals, signals, yeah. something that Nephew is going to expose. So let's say we take a 
we, we take a um, we take BPF and then we expose um, a set of metrics, you know, XYZ dot uh, uh, um, the, the 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 metrics that's um, then 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 for this common set of metrics and traces and things, you want to you want to go through this local insight operators and and be able to, but then what does it do then? If that's the case, no, not exactly. Uh, I'm not mm -hmm. saying about because we already discussed that it's not a good idea for Bubble to try to make some standardization what metrics should be exposed, mm -hmm. which shouldn't. Mm -hmm. okay, at I this think, point, I, I yeah, go ahead. Uh, at this point, I just can see that we define declaratively the CRD, what needs to be do, do, observed. We need to find a way to observe that, even though observably to not be aware what it, what it is, but then operator itself or such local insights operator based on the CRD will know how to fetch that data and what data, specific data for the vendor, let's say, is available. Uh, yeah, because there is yeah, needed. I, I would I would have I would have to say I have no I have no such illusions that a CLD would be describing something to the level of um what in the level of something that beyond what we can define uh, on what we have today. So meanings that based on NF deployment, which is the only thing we really have today. Um, that needs to be supported across measures um, is this is a network functions of this type. I, actually, we don't really have a type per se, but uh, but then. I lost you. Um, yeah. I, we no longer hear you for some reason. Oh. Uh, this is a. Uh... Uh, no, we do. Okay, this is this is a, a a very weird thing on. So this happens on the SDK meeting too. What happened is uh, occasionally when my phone is so close, my, my phone has obviously has the. I'm not using my phone by the way, obviously right now. Uh, but then my phone has a uh, has a has 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 a Zoom uh, app inside too, so that sometimes the audio audio get routed into my phone. I don't know why. <laughs> um. Anyway, so. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't think we would be able to whatever CLD we ended up defining. Um, I'm, I'm guessing the CLD that you refer to, Pietro, is the, is a CLD to say, oh, let's turn on, let's let's start observing uh, this network function, right? So, so the that is not nothing exactly. more than basically. Sorry. No, sorry, yeah. not exactly. Start yeah. observing rather than. Uh... We can observe everything we know. We can put some receivers, exporters, etc. But then we, if we come to the situation where we have, or some kind, of, some kind of KPIs defined in the standardization of some vendor-specific KPIs, and I would like to find a way to describe that this needs to be observed, and then this can be exposed as the through the some kind of APIs. So that that's the part I'm not sure we're not, what we'll be doing, <laughs> actually. Yeah. Um, I think I think that was being talked about last week as well. Um, but anyway, so before we get to that, uh, Kieran has his hand up for a while, so that's good. Yeah, I think. Um, I mean, uh, this is all very sort of theoretical discussion, and maybe mm -hmm. a use case would be the best way to try and tease out exactly what components in this diagram we need. So whether we need a custom sidecar or not would probably be down to what it would actually do. And similarly for the local insights operator. But Virada also made a comment in the chat, which was probably related to something I would have asked as well when we talk about sort of 3GPP standards, which <clears throat> are already fairly prevalent in the space. Is this something that we're looking to evolve or align to and so on? Um, yeah. So maybe a use case would be good to, to try and tease out exactly what components we need to try and solve a pressing issue that Nephew can add value for. For me, the question was uh, regarding the, the question about the free, uh, free GPP standards. If, if there is standard, it's easy and probably many solutions provide the way 
even the service level orchestrators provide the way to, to have these insights. The question is what happens when the vendor have some specific metrics? Because he have a lot of metrics related to the standardization, but then there are metrics which are not related, which are not standardized. Maybe it's theoretical discussions. I'm not sure that this is the question to the community. I would like to answer such question. I no, I I think if there are standards, uh, whether or not we would be using standards to create a set of APIs uh, that allows us to pinpoint a particular KPI that is supported cross vendor. Um, I I think the question becomes a lot bigger uh, in terms in the software framework. I. I, I Nephew is not a standard body. Uh, in, in, a, in a software framework, um, you if if we publish a set of based on standard, a set of KPI upon which everyone uh, onboarding Nephew needs to support, so the observability would assume everything uh, from that set of KPI will be will be available. Um, I'm open to that at least uh, if there is a if, if there's like consensus across the vendor community, at the very least, um, we are not, we should not be setting, um, you know, instead of required KPIs on our own, um, because, you know, we're not, we, we, we don't, we, we don't want to like make vendor differentiations uh, out of this. Um, and yeah, we're not, we're not creating standards uh, off of here. Um, that's always a hairy point. Uh, so, because if a KPI, a standard KPI is is, is being used, uh, and a KPI is calculated by collecting this set of data and calculated this way uh, for different set of vendors, instead of I, I because I'm not sure actually that just because it's on standard body does it means um, they must expose this. Uh, every vendor must expose that KPI. Uh, in the same fashion. So I'm, I'm not actually familiar with the 3GPP standards or the ITF standards that Verita said. Um, so I, I, I can't say that for sure. Um, but um, so in the same format, uh, it has to be an SMMP versus like some other things. Uh, I'm, I'm not actually sure if that's the case. Uh, and if it is, great. <laughs> um, but, you know, go ahead, Karen. I mean, typically there's like three stages to 3GPP anyway, which is um, mm -hmm. sort of general general principles and then the use cases and then the sort of third stage is generally a specification with the protocol and the transport and so on. Uh, I'm no expert either, but that's my understanding is that by the time you get to stage three, you generally have some kind of data format and transport protocol and the the actual structure of the, like in this case, for example, you'd be talking about counters or, or events and that sort of thing. And those mm -hmm. counters and events would be very specific to sort of multi-vendor type of use cases, you know, GNOB handovers and that kind of that kind of thing. So, uh, I mean, I guess you could you could push for hotel aligned as a as a kind of a stage three specification because there could be multiple solution sets for the different uh, <clears throat> at, at the stage three. You can have different protocols and different transport mechanisms and so on. Okay. No, but even then, I, I, I'm guessing, uh, you know, the 3 gpp standards in the ITF world is not like, oh, we're going, we're going to, ex we, we are conforming to cloud native standards, <laughs> right? They're not, they're not exposing them as, um, you know, OTL, OTLP or whatever thing. Uh, uh, Certainly thing. not today anyway. Yeah. So I, I generally but I think we, do we do that? Do, does Nephew wants to support different protocol formats of collecting things across vendors? Um, again, this is this is up to a community. Um, or is Nephew trying to solve some of the same use cases that three GPP standards were put in place to solve? I guess would be another question. So if it is already there, great. Um, the question is, as an open source project, if something's written in a, a standard publications specifications, uh, but there's no corresponding open source project for it. 
uh, what ended up we would uh, um, it said it said a strong appetite of the of the community to 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 implement that code. Um, you know, the, the, as you said, the, the protocol stacks and things, the protocol formats and things that that um, that the, the standard bodies mandated all vendors to conform to. Um, do we do we want to like implement one if if one doesn't exist? Let's say, for example, um, uh, in the open source community. So, or at least the processor, I guess, in this case, <laughs> the processing part, the receiving part of that. Um, so, that's also an interesting question. And with uh, six minutes left, <laughs> um, Anyone else has any questions? I'm, I'm sure that's a really big topic moving forward too. So, um, I would, yeah, okay. I, I would actually like to obviously, and, and Pietra himself actually talked about it too earlier, uh, that we, we may want to get into just trying to build something so that we have a better idea uh, what's next. Um, so, there are a lot of, as, Piatra and other people actually discuss. There are a lot of things that are that are worth discussing for a very long, well, not, not hopefully not a very long time, but a little longer term, uh, like whether or not we would be consuming KPIs or turn something on that way. Um, I would. Oh, go ahead, Kieran. Sorry. <laughs> no, I mean I was thinking in terms of coming up with a use case, and if we didn't want to go into the sort of three GPP world. Yeah, I know the top of that diagram spoke a lot about sort of maybe observing Nephew itself, and maybe mm -hmm. that would be a means by which we can build out the infrastructure that's required to yeah. support. Yeah, so, 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 so the, yeah, the very simple thing, right? So the the, the actual software problem we have to solve. <laughs> uh, a um, in free five GC, we brought up a UPF. Let's just just use UPF for now. They just brought up UPF, um, and. Let me uh, put something up so it's a little easier to talk. Can you guys see the screen? Yes. Okay. Um, so in, in, in general, so a lot of things like, oh, can we turn something on? And this is the KPI we're targeting. Uh, those, those we can put on the side, in my, in my opinion for now. And we should discuss that as a, as a team, as a subgroup, uh, um, to to refine it. Um, the some of the things that are on uh, also on Piatra's uh, um, diagrams is something like OTL collector. So the receivers could be anything that we kind of implement, um, or we can receive it directly from the um, the, the target the, the the target workload. Um, we can process it, tagging it, do something. Uh, and then export it. And one of the exported, for example, is gRPC. So you can you can use gRPC streaming uh, on a side for 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 some for an operators to receive it. Uh, so I would propose that we are picking some technologies. And I think I think most of the folks from Orange <laughs> were asking. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, they were, they're, they're saying that PPF would be a good technology to use, so that, that's great. Uh, um, if they're willing to to contribute, um, that we can we can start off with with using BPF um, to be the the engine that that would help us um, observe the UPF, uh, and then and then and then on this 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 forget about the side for now, um, and then the, whatever things that are actually collecting from the BPF directly. Uh, should be exposing that data um, to through OTEL means. Uh, so in that case, the collector on the on the on the other hand would be able to zip it because you, you probably pack it into OT, OT LP uh, protocol, and we'll be able to receive it, uh, and then and then we can ex export it to the NF operator. Um, so if we get to the, so, so simplistically, very simplistically, uh, um, the only thing we really have uh, for defining today uh, from NF deployment is capacity 
for UPF and for UPF it's it's throughput. So if we can get the instrumentation, if, if we get the BPF program um, to to give us information about um, throughput or information about packet counts and and and, and timestamps, and someone will calculate the throughput. Either way is fine. Um, and then on the receiving end, uh, we are building something uh, that would expose it through, say, gRPC. Uh, and, and then the NF operators would therefore be able to receive it. Um, that would be a pretty good first step uh, for pretty much the next several weeks. Uh, then we will we'll, we'll have the basic framework in place uh, that we know we can collect from in a network functions that doesn't really expose anything in free GC's case, um, using a nephew specific implementations, which I'm sure also the BPI program also come from some other sources, um, and a control plane of that BPI program that would expose them using hotel means, which may be specific to us. Um, a, the, a collector, which would be from hotel, uh, but then maybe we have to implement our receivers, maybe we have to implement our exporters. We, we probably have to implement some sort of processing uh, on our own inside. And then, and then that would be a, 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 a nephew implementation that would be able to set something to a, the, the free 5 gc operator. Uh, and then an operator would be able to receive that information um, and compare that against the intents, for example. Uh, so for let's for argument's sake, say UPF is um, is uh, CPU bound, which is probably is for free five GC. Um, but then we're not we're not sending enough traffic to really challenge CPU utilizations. But uh, but then so in that case, um, it would be getting information uh, for from Kubernetes directly, which is also through Hotel, uh, about the CPU of the containers of of the UPF containers. Um, and also the current the current uh, um, throughput information, which could be in the form of actually calculated throughput or uh, packet count, uh, uh, byte counts, packet counts over a period of time. Um, then, then we can, then that's actually, I think it's, it's giving us the diagram, the food diagrams, I guess. I don't, I don't even remember what, which one has a food diagram. Um, in terms of what workload clusters can do, um, in terms of workload clusters, this whole path, not this path yet, this whole path would be would, would be toned out. So we will be able to see um, exposing um, information. And for now it could just be metrics. Um, this this we don't we don't need to do traces and logs yet. Um, because for, for in the beginning takeoff stage for PLC we can we can just expose metrics first. Um, and then, and then be able to, ex to to expose that to the operators, and then and an understanding of the operators um, would have to, and then we can start dissolving what kind of things that are missing in terms of gaps. Do we do we need uh, any interfaces uh, uh, specifications so that such that the NF operator needs to specify? I'm interested in something that related to this network function, and then how do we express that? And, and then enable that means they, they basically subscription, right? So they subscribe to metrics uh, that are related to this network functions. Um, so so that subscription interface, I think last week when Ben was here, he was suggesting a GNMI and that basically is Yang. Yang would be the modeling on top of GNMI. Um, and then and you know I'm I'm not a Yang expert, so I don't know how to express that actually even in Yang. Um, but then that would be one way to explore it. But then we we a the framework needs to be in place first, um, and then and then we only expose one thing, so we, we can we make sure that the collection is okay, uh, and then and then two we, we start exploring the the richness of the language that we can do uh, in terms of like getting this is not that great, in terms of getting those metrics uh, from the for the NF operators uh, because at the time when I guess the app, the active parts and, and, and other other things that may be interested on the workload clusters uh, would be leveraging pretty similar infrastructure uh, moving forward. 
So, so that's, I think that is a good um, first step uh, for, for a quick POC that only runs on web clusters for now. And then making sure that some system, some, some, some software inside web cluster would be able to um, subscribe to metrics exposed uh, by the observability framework. So that's the that that's my suggestions to uh, to for folks that are interested. Let's get together and build this as a PLC. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So the so so one thing I I, I was trying to pencil in Marston because he's been. He's been working on the the um, and, and exploring the what, what kind of data we can scrap, I guess, out of Free Five GC. Yeah. So if if you and, and including generic data, so it doesn't have to be like Free Five GC specific. So if it's if it's if you you'll be interested to actually take on that, I, I can I can do the I can do the hotel uh, collector uh, stuff just just for an experimentation at this point. Oh. And then, and then for it. So I just wonder if you're interested, Masa. Yeah, sure. Just uh, okay. one thing. Uh, I was actually looking at fluent, defluent bit, and uh, getting logs out of uh, the okay. NFs. Okay. Uh, okay. So, but you yeah, said you, you were, a few you minutes ago. We, yeah, we were way ahead of where we want the PLC to be initially. But then, but then obviously uh, that would be a good thing to do uh, uh, moving forward. But then in terms of like let's get something moving so that we can prove. That the framework works, uh, uh, and then and then we can expose um, a way for an operator, for an our function operators to ex to to um, to express uh, what they what they're interested in, uh, and be able to get them. Uh, well, eight be able to get them first, and uh, uh, and then that's just generic data that we stream by default. You don't have to turn it on; we just send it out, uh, and then and then the collector would just collect them, and then and then and then the end of operators. I, I have operators sitting around <laughs> anyway. So, so uh, the operators would be able to subscribe to that. Uh, I think I think that would be very good first step of a PLC um, that we, we we figure out what to do now in terms of this is the, the way to do it because because after that uh, locks and 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 traces are also just part of hotel data. So we, we should be able to get that pretty much around the same yeah using the same means. Yeah, don't don't let me discourage you from exploring <laughs> more stuff. Uh, but then, in terms of let's let's get something moving, I think this is the first step. Sure. Let me just finish what I'm working on, and then okay. I'll see what's next on the to-do list. Yeah. Because if you if you have something already, if, let's say you already identify a BPF uh, open source BPF program uh, or, or or something uh, that does work, then you verify that it does work with Free Five GC. I think we can go with that too. From the get go, and the only thing we really, really is uh, um, uh, your your control uh, software that are collecting this would have to also be exposing that using the hotel interface. Um, but I'm, I'm guessing that's probably not even a problem because even a service monitor is an hotel interface. Right? So yeah, so we can we can sync up um, on 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 Slack. And try to try to move toward that. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, and then if anyone else is interested, you know, obviously, yeah, please let everybody know on Slack. That would be great. And then we're eight minutes over, so anything else from anyone? Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you all. Mm -hmm. Thanks. See you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Thank you.